from the audience, please. Huh? I request dignitaries and guests to please join on the dice. Professor Yogesh Singhji, Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi. <laughs> Dr. Ali Chagini, the Ambassador of Islamic Republic of Iran. Professor Ramesh C. Gaur Sahab, Dean Academic IGNCA. Please, sir. I think Professor Kazim Kadu is not here. He is not here. And the keynote speaker of the day, Professor Ramesh Bhardwaji. Please. Uh, one of the organizers, Professor Rajinder Kumar, Head Department of Persian University of Delhi, please. <laughs> Professor Ali Akbar Shah, maybe sometime you will also be a professor, no problem at all. Yeah, yes, Secretary Persian Foundation of India and convener of this seminar. Uh, uh, so, Prof Professor Kadui will join later. Respected guests on the dais, teachers, colleagues, delegates from Iran, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and other countries, national delegates, students, friend, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, namaskar, and salam to all of you. As we know that our esteemed Vice Chancellor Professor Yogesh Singh Ji presiding over the two-day international, two international seminar on the theme, the impact of Indic civilization upon Persian civilization under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsava. This conference is organized by the Department of Persian University of Delhi in collaboration with IGNCA, ICSSR, and ARC. Sir, with your permission, can, can I start my proceedings? Thank you very much, sir. Hozare Gerami Khanumha Vagayan. Bename Khodavande Kono Makan. Khodavande Inso Khodavande Jan. Khodavande Behro Khodavande Bar. Khodavande Aflako Shamso Kamar. Khodavande Taro, Khodavande Noor, Khodavande Gilman, Khodavande Hur, Barafrakte Gumbade Noh Seper, Barafrukte Meshale Maho Meher. Professor Kazim Kadui, Professor of Persian Language and Literature from Yazd University. Khadiyu Zamino Zamanas to Bas, Shahen Shahe Hardo Jahanas to Bas. Dear guests, Mohabbat Sikhana, Mohabbat Se Rehna, Mohabbat Ke Lamho Ko Taksim Karra, Inhi Se Munawar Hai Mera Kabila, Kabile Me Mere Andhera Kaha Hai. Now we have to honor our distinguished guests and dignitaries with bouquet, and I welcome all my guests before presentation of bouquet with. An Urdu couplet. Chaman tumse ibarat hai, chaman tumse ibarat hai, bahare tumpe naza hai, tumhare samne pulo se murjaya nahi jata. Now I invite Professor Rajinder Kumar, Head Department of Persian, to present a bouquet to our esteemed Vice Chancellor, Professor Yogesh Singh Ji. You Now, if you will allow, I myself welcome the chief guest of the inaugural session, His Excellency Dr. Ali Chagini. Na Afghani mo ne Turko Tatarim, Chaman Zadi mo Azyak Shak Sarim, Tamize Rangobu Bama Haramast, Kema Parvarde Yak No Baharim, 
تبریک ارزمی کو نام برائیے فرا رسیدہ نے سال نو بے خدمت سفیر محترم Now I invite one of my colleagues, Dr. Mehtab Jahan, to present a bouquet to an eminent professor of Persian language and literature and guest of honor of this inaugural session with a couplet of Persian, Hich shadi nist andar in jahan bartaras didare ruwe dustan. Now I invite my colleague, Dr. Ali Akbar Shah, Secretary Persian Foundation of India, to present a bouquet to Professor Ramesh Bhardwaj Ji, Head Department of Sanskrit and a thorough and sincere scholar of Sanskrit and keynote speaker of today International Conference. <laughs> Sir, I would like to share a song for you, Mr. Khurshid. مثل خرشید سہر فکر کی تابانی میں بات میں سادہ و آزاد معانی میں دقیق ناو آئی انوائٹ ون آف مائی کلیگ ڈاکٹر زیاؤ الرحمان ٹو پریزنٹ آ بکے ٹو پروفیسر کازم کہدوئی Ah, there is, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, to present a bouquet to Professor R.C. Gaur Sahab, the Dean, IGNCA, and the host of this international conference. He is host, but he is, he is a guest of us. He is a guest. So, we, we welcome you, sir. Now, after this bouquet presentation, we are heading towards Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav and the impact of Indians Indic civilization on Persian civilization. Agar mein ye kahun ke Bharat ne dunia ko Vasudev Kutumukam ka concept diya. Panch Tantra, Advit ka falsafa, Shatranj, Shuruti, Ayurved diya, Yoga diya, Panani jaisa grammarian diya, Sushita Samhita diya, Charak Samhita diya, Salhotra diya, Bharati Khadak di, جسے ہم شمشیر یا تلوار بھی کہتے ہیں ویرا مہر دیا مہاویر اور بھگوان پوچھ جیسا انسان دیا جس نے تمام فارسی زبان قوموں میں اپنی ایک چھاپ چھوڑی فلسفہ لٹریچر میڈیسین ریاضی ایسٹرنمی ایسٹرلوجی ان سب کو متعارف کرایا یہ کوئی عطیشوکتی نہیں ہے یہ بالکل سچ ہے یہ حقیقت ہے ہم سب جانتے ہیں یہ بات کی اس کے بعد میرا دل چاہتا ہے کہ ماں بھارتی کے قدموں میں ایک حدیعہ نصار کرتا چلوں رشک فردوں سے بری چاند ستاروں سے ہسی میری دھرتی میرا محبوب وطن میری زمین چاند کی بستی بسالوں کے ستاروں کے نگر ہر جگہ دھرتی کے چہرے کا اجالہ ہوگا تم جہاں بھول رہے ہوں گے خلاوں میں ڈگر اس کی عظمت کے خیالوں نے سمحالا ہوگا اس کی تنویر و تجلی ہے سرے چرخ بری میری دھرتی میرا محبوب وطن میری زمین گفتگو کرتا اس کے اجنتہ کا دیار روح مرمر میں بھی چمکاتا ہوا تاج کا نور باٹتی وادی کشمیر بہاروں کو وقار جرہتے دیتا ہوا اس کے ہمالہ کا غرور اس کے ساغر کی ہر ایک موج پہ ساحل ہے مکین میری دھرتی میرا محبوب وطن میری زمین اس کی آغوش میں مچھلی ہوئی ممتہ کی دولار فصل احساس کو لہکاتے ہوئے گنگ و جمن اس کے ہر روپ میں آرائش فطرت کا سنگار اس کے ہر رنگ میں تاریخ و تمدن کی پھبن آ کے تسکین ملی لطف مشیعت کو یہیں میری دھرتی میرا محبوب وطن میری زمین There is an announcement regarding a slight change in the program 
In the inaugural session, Honorable Professor Sachidanand Joshi, Member Secretary IGNCA, due to some urgent assignment, is not present. And Honorable Professor Ramesh Chandra Gaur Sahab, Dean, Academic and Director, Library and Information, and Head of Kalanidhi IGNCA, and host of this inaugural session and two-day conference, I request you, sir, to please deliver the welcome address uh, i invite him saath agar hain to kafi hain hum saath agar hain to kafi hain hum nirbhar hain khud par hum rakhte hain dam tujhse hi to zinda hu main o mere hindustan bharat bharat o bharat meri jaan please sir बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्रोफेसर अशरफ फॉर योर वेरी काइंड वर्ड्स नमस्कार इट इन डीड ए ग्रेट ऑनर इन एक्सटेंडिंग दिस हार्टी वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस टू डेज इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन इम्पैक्ट ऑफ इंडिक सिविलाइजेशन ऑन पर्सियन सिविलाइजेशन बींग हेल्ड एट आई जी एन सी ए इन कॉलाब्रेशन विद सेंट Department of Persian Studies, University of Delhi, and also uh, other collaborative partner. I am so honored to uh, extend a very hearty welcome to all our dignitaries on dais, as well as all the participants, delegates in the hall, as well as those who are who have joined us through uh, our YouTube and Facebook channel. On behalf of Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. Uh, Uh, i'm standing here to uh, extend a very hearty welcome to our very valued partner uh, his excellency uh, mr ali chigani the honorable ambassador of uh, republic of iran <laughs> ignc and uh, iran uh, embassy is collaborative partner in many events uh, we have been working on organizing various festivals and uh, personally uh, i'm i'm very fortunate uh, to have a uh, number of uh, partnership with various institution in, in uh, iran uh, and uh, from time to time we have been collaborating so thank you for again for your kind presence and uh, gracing this occasion uh we are honored to welcome uh, honorable vice chancellor of the university of delhi professor yogesh singh uh, who is also a very valued partner for ignc and always supportive of our activities and always there whenever we need it thank you sir uh we have with us a keynote speaker uh here today to deliver uh, the keynote in professor ramesh bharadwaj uh, who is a, a professor and head of department of sanskrit university of delhi thank you sir for your kind presence we also have with us uh uh, uh mr uh, professor professor kazin kedoi i am not able to see his name here so I'm, so uh, thank you for your uh, another keynote address and welcome you to ignc and uh, our partner professor rajendra kumar uh, dr ali akbar shah and all other collaborator i extend a very welcome uh, hearty welcome to all of you uh, we have lot of share common heritage between uh, india and iran and i personally witnessed uh, during my interaction with counterpart in iran uh, for example uh, we have eminent photographic collection of raja dindyal a part of collection is here and another part of collection uh, is in golasta palace in iran and there are number of uh, such uh, shared common heritage in terms of language in terms of culture in terms of tradition which uh, going to discuss in this particular uh, today con international conference i'm not going to uh, deliberate more on that i just want to highlight that ignc is always willing to extend support and uh, all kind of uh, collaboration for anything uh, when two countries comes together and we we enhance mutual cultural relations in this regard uh, a, a landmark work was done by ignc we have compiled a distributive catalog of molana rumi's work professor kazmi is here and that was something uh, well appreciated by not just what iran but other countries where molana rumi is one of the known uh, personality and similarly we have been discussing several other collaborative program 
to enhance mutual cooperation in these countries. So uh, on behalf of IGNC and also on behalf of our member secretary, Dr. Sajidhan Joshi, who is because of certain uh, commitment outside Delhi, he is not able to make it today. I welcome you once again and thank you very much and looking forward to interaction. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, Professor uh, Gaur Sahab, for your thought-provoking welcome address. Now I call upon Professor Rajinder Kumar, Head Department of Persian University of Delhi, for opening remarks. I invite him with a couplet, Mahe no kah kashan phool saba abre bahar abhi ja ab tere aane ke zamane aaye. Alim Sahab for this wonderful couplet. Good morning. Salaam Alaikum. Khosh Amdi. Durud Barha Mishima. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Department of Persian, I welcome Professor Yogi Singh, uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, and thank to preside over this inaugural session of this international seminar entitled The Impact of Indic Civilization on Persian Civilization. I also welcome to His Excellency Dr. Ali Chegani, Honorable Ambassador of Islamic Republic of Iran, New Delhi, and Dr. Ramesh Sigor, uh, Professor Ramesh Bhardwaj, Honorable uh, Key Speaker and Head Department of Persian University of Delhi. I also welcome foreign delegates uh, Professor Kazim Kahdwai from Jaj University, Iran, uh, Professor Murtaja Mohsini from Mazandran University, Iran, Dr. Jawad Ahmedi, uh, Secretary of Foundation of Bedil, Iran, and Seema Abbasi from Iran, uh, Dr. Aziza from Uzbekistan, uh, Dr. Ali Akbar uh, from Uzbekistan. And this international seminar is being organized in the wake of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav with the support and collaboration of Ministry of Culture, Persian Foundation of India, IGNCA, ICCR, and Asia Research Center of Tehran University. Uh, first of all, I want to apprise all of, your, all of you regarding the Department of Persian. The University of Delhi was established in 1922, and with its establishment, the Department of Persian was also set up. The Department of Persian has been functioning in the university since its establishment, and at that time, it was part of the combined departments of Arabic, Persian, and Urdu. The Department of Urdu was established as an independent department in 1959. Later on, departments of Arabic and Persian bifurcated as separate departments in 1978. With the establishment of the Department of Persian in the Faculty of Arts, late Professor Sayyid Amir Hassan Abdi was appointed HOD. Professor Abdi had made a plan to prepare the history of Indo-Persian literature produced in India. It is a matter of great satisfaction that the department has succeeded to some extent in its mission, and today the department has more than 60 awarded PhDs and more than 70 MPhils. The literary and academic activities of the department are not confined merely to teaching and learning of Persian language and literature but also exchange of views, periodical gatherings with esteemed academicians are arranged. The department conducts a weekly seminar on every Wednesday for the research scholar where research scholars exchange their views with the faculties. During the years of pandemic COVID-19, Depart Department of Persian organized 24 lectures online which were delivered by Iranian and Indian scholars. Likewise, Seven national and international seminars were organized online and offline. VC sir, I feel proud to inform the august guests that eight faculties of Department of Persian were conferred certificate honor by the President of India for their contribution in the field of Persian language and literature. Likewise, Padam Shri was conferred to late Professor Sayyid, Sayyid Amir Hassan Abdi and Professor Hanna Khatun. Four faculties of the department were conferred international award book of the year in the second regional book award by government of Islamic Republic of Iran in 2020. Likewise, six faculties were conferred international Saudi award uh, 
One of them was, uh, is Professor Ali Mashrav Khan, was awarded this prestigious award, international award by the Honorable Ambassador, uh, who is sitting here, uh, on 9th March 2022. Uh, historical relations between India and Iran are dated back to a remote past. Both the civilization are Aryans. Perhaps this is the reason various similarities are found in the ancient religious texts of both the civilization. Some scholars of Sanskrit, Old Persian, and Avesta language are opined that these languages are the sisters born of the same mother. This is a, there is a description of North India in Avesta, the holy book of Zoroastrian. During the reign of Achmanian king Darius and particularly uh, the Safavid dynasty kings, many intellectuals, artisans, and poets migrated from Iran to India, and some of them settled down here, and intermarriages were happened. Thus, this reciprocal exchange enriched the both cultures. In the Shahnama of Firdosi, Firdosi mentions the Iranian Sassanid king Bahram Gore requested the Indian king Shangul to send uh, singers and musicians to Iran that they teach Iranians the art of Indian music. There are several, several examples of very uh, close relations in the pre-Islamic era, such as well-known translation of Panchatantra into Pahlavi language, as Kalile Dimne, the game of chess was introduced to Iran. In 1206, Kutubdin Abak was appointed slave king. Thus, Islamic rule set up in India since then. Ghaznavid's army were accompanied by thousands of Iranian scholars, writers, poets, and physicians who brought with them Persian language and literature, and this led to the impact of Iranian culture on the Indian culture. Iranian people also influenced by the Indian culture and traditions reciprocally. In the reign of Mughal dynasty, particularly Akbar, many Indic books were translated into Persian language, such as Upanishads, Ramayana, Gita, Shuks, Satpati, Yog Vishista, etc. Usually, there is a tradition in India and Iran. Topic of seminars and conferences are impact on Persian language literature on India. This is the first time ever in India and Iran the Department of Persian organizes international seminar entitled The Impact of Indic Civilization on Persian Civilization. I hope many interesting historical and cultural facts will be revealed in these two days. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rajinder Kumar, for your opening remarks. It was really wonderful. And you covered all the aspects of this two-day international seminar on the topic, Impact of Indic Civilization on Persian Civilization. But sir, he has not brought his name to the record because he also has taken Saadi Award, given Saadi Award on 9th of the March. But he has, not, he has not given his name because he was just reading the names of others. Uh, now I invite Professor Ramesh Bhardwaji, an eminent scholar, researcher, and a good administrator. Now he is heading Department of Sanskrit University of Delhi. He has many books to his credit. He travelled so many countries and continents in search of knowledge, I invite him with a couplet of Urdu, Ye mehre taba se jaake keh do, Ye mehre taba se jaake keh do, Ke apni kirno ko gin ke rakhe, Main apne sehra ke zarre zarre ko khud chamakna sikha raha hoon. Aayye, Professor. Om. Well, I have prepared a keynote address in English, and I was planning to say something from these papers. But in the beginning, if you want to know the world, then only two words can denote the real nature of the world. One is Bharat, India. And second is Iran. If you miss these two words, 
you cannot understand right the history of mankind on this earth well just to say about the history to understand the real history we have some tools first is textual linguistic that we have to prove the first statement second if you want to know the true history of this mankind then you have archaeological evidences we all know about the relation of avesta rigved panstantra others as professor rajinder has stated but just go through the archaeological evidences of this great area from harappa to mesopotamia west asia just go to the iran and ultimately visit the central asia this is the compact one cultural country how i just i will try to explain that well indo iranian linkages we explored the strong bindings of indian and iranian people for over 6000 years this is recorded in the archaeology it notes how indian texts like the mahabharata and puranas recorded the existence of the persian whom they called the parsikas trade between akmenians and the indian lasted not only till the rule of sasanians the strong economical and civilizational ties bind iran and india till this date the close links of rigveda and avesta i think i should uh, give up this and i just go first tool that is the linguistic data of indo iranians well we know about the history of indian languages vedic language to hindi or modern indian languages in a specific sense there exists also a group of dardi and another of kafiri also called nuristani languages genetically related to the indian tongues but separated from them at an early epoch the dardic idioms such as china indus kohistani khowar kalassa pashai tirahi became isolated from the indian ones before the rise of prakritism and kafiri languages kali vaigli askun prasun still earlier thus won the territory of the indian subcontinent from the second half of the second millennium bc there existed groups of respectively indian dardic kafiri dialects all belonging to the indo iranian family of languages on the territory of iran afghanistan and central asia and pakistan again another group of languages persian tajik pashto ossetic baluchi uh, shugnani idga munj uh, waki yagnobi etc is known belonging also to the same family of languages but termed iranian in a specific sense of the word modern iranian languages also have their medieval uh, history called middle iranian languages middle persian parthian sogdian bactrian korebian saka alan etc as well as their foreigners in antiquity termed old iranian old persian avestan pahlavi etc with the help of an abundance of linguistic and literary monuments rigveda and avesta it was easy to genet uh, to re uh, to relate genetic relationship between the indo dardic kafiri and iranian languages in antiquity for example avesta stood so near to vedic sanskrit that by making use of the phonetic correspondence between the two we can transpose whole avestan sentences word by word sound by sound into vedic sanskrit genetic relationship between the indo dardic kafiri and iranian languages means that they formed a common system of communication a linguist a, a linguistic unity in other terms and we use in linguistic phylum word this uh, phylum from india to iran west asia and central asia this is one phylum linguistic community 
which was using the same origin of our languages. Well, we all know from the history of uh, Iran that Iran ruled the whole Central Asia and other areas also till this uh, border of Sindhu River. Up to this area, there was Iranian rule in the history of uh, mankind. Well, when we say that we have the history of linguistic evidence, just remember the Mitanni Kingdom. The Mitanni Kingdom of Upper Mesopotamia, which was established by people having a language very similar to that of Indo-Iranians, these people are supposed to have come to Mesopotamia between 1741 to 1600 BC. In this area, the cuneiform inscriptions discovered at Bogaj Koi in Northern Asia Minor revealed certain terms and names of deities, which are unmistakably of the Aryan. In this regard, a treaty recorded in the Bogaj Koi inscription has to be taken into consideration for the names of gods it mentions the king of Hittite named uh, um, uh, uh, Subivilla invaded the territories of the Mitanni in Asia Minor. A treaty was made in 1360 BC by him with that Mitanni king, in which we have a mention of deities as witness to this treaty. Uh, Mitra, Varuna, Indra, and Nasatya. And the same deities, gods, also we find their reference in the Avestan literature. Well, I told Akbar Sahab that I'm not going to present the contribution of India to the Iranian culture through literature, culture, etc. But my small presentation is about the contribution of India in collaboration with Iran in the field of science and technology. Because from last 7,000 years, these two brothers, India and Iran, well, as per our traditional theory, you may understand that theory, that Vedic people were united in India, but due to religious differences, Jarthustra, a great seer of Vedic area, left India after fighting on the basis of the religious matters, and established one new kingdom in Iran, as Avesta mentions. These Western scholars, Eurocentric scholars, destroy the real history of our, our uh, Indo-Iranian relations. They say that we came from Central Asia, we came from other European countries. No. Because in Avestan literature, we find the references of Sapta Sindhu and specific geological places of India in the Avastan literature. But in Rigveda or Vedic literature, we do not find any reference, geographical reference of Central Asia or Iran. It means when Jarthustra, as we know the Iranian traditional history, 8,500 BC was that age when Jarthustra left India and established one new kingdom, Airana, Arya Desh, in Iran. And uh, as we all know that uh, we have three phases of our contribution to the world. Pre-Harappan, as we have received in the archaeological evidences, especially I, uh, we must thank Dr. Mughal of Pakistan, who excavated in Mehergad in Baluchistan and other areas and found that the culture of Indian people of 6,000, 7,000 BC was in developing stage. And in the mature Harappan age, which is 3,000 to uh, 1,300 BC, this time, this period was used by the Indian people in providing scientific and technological items to the whole world. And the root, just try to understand, both Baluchistan and Indus Valley traditions developed from an early agricultural society. We were not nomadic. 
हम लोग चरवाहे नहीं थे हिंदुस्तान के लोग वी वर वेल इक्विप्ड इन दी सोफिस्टिकेटेड इरिगेशन सिस्टम इन एग्रीकल्चर सिस्टम एज वी हैव रिसीव्ड इन मेहरगढ़ इन पाकिस्तान एंड इन कलीबंगन एंड मोर देन 400 हंड्रेड साइट रिसीव्ड बाई इंडियंस इन द सरस्वती रिवर कल्चर स्पेशली इन राजस्थान हरियाणा पंजाब एंड गुजरात सो दिस कल्चर द पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ एंड क्राफ्ट स्पेशाइजेशन क्रिएटेड सोशो इकोनॉमिक प्री रिक्विजिट्स फॉर द एमरजेंस ऑफ हरपन सिविलाइजेशन बिकॉज देर वॉज ए लॉन्ग हिस्ट्री ऑफ द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ऑल दीज टेक्नोलॉजीज कल्चरल and trade links became more intense and regular with the central asian region at a number of baluchistan sites links the southern turkmenistan are particularly obvious in the painted pottery the vessels imported from the baluchistan decorated in the null style were discovered in wealthy graves of important early urban center of shahre sokta in the iranian province of sistan the urban development in the indus valley introduced the pattern of the earliest urbanization in the in this part two things are clear the first is the surplus food production in the fertile soil of the river irrigated plains punjab sub sindhu river area mainly yielding wheat and barley and cotton as the cash crop the surplus was stored in granaries two of which have been exposed one at mohanjodro and uh, another at harappa the second aspect of urban life was craft specialization and industrialization of the cities copper which was available from baluchistan and neighboring rajasthan was the basic metal for industrial and commercial development there is little uh, little doubt um, uh, 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 that timber probably from the devadar tree Uh, was obtained in the northern hills from himalaya as the excavations at mohanjodro timber beams are knows, uh, uh, known to have been used in brick masonry carpenters tools evidence of skill in carpentry uh, these three items copper cotton and timber appear to have been the mainstay of urban prosperity for luxury goods shell ivory lapis lazuli uh, carmelian and other precious stones as well as gold and silver were obtained to manufacture articles of common taste a bead making even today in all delhi bead making work is so popular and which is exported to all african or uh, european countries still we have that tradition a uh, bead making craft was well established the painted pottery tradition speaks of another specialized craft two kinds of stones were previously used a uh, uh, steatite probably from the neighborhood of tepe yaya in eastern iran were used for making seals and almaster for cups and vessels limestone statues music instruments dancing figures tell of the development of fine arts in this culture except for the last few items others were already in use of pre indus culture in pre harappan also but in this period there is an uh, acceleration and standardization of this products the sea provided an outlet to overseas markets there is nothing in this economic exploitation that needed foreign influence material evolution from indigenous sources is well documented on the other hand the standardization of goods enforcement of definite system of weight and measures and above all formulation and execution of municipal rules in the cities and the same type of harappan cities we find in west asia same as we find in harappan uh, civilization well the scholars review the archaeological evidence for cotton and flax in south asia this is the theory given by the archaeologists 
on the basis of the archaeobotanical evidence that cotton, because in Rigveda, we have one Rishi, Krit Samad. And cotton was invented by that seer as Rigveda quotes. And this was, uh, you know, uh, highlighted by Acharya Vinobhavi in his book that Krit Samad Rishi was the inventor of cotton. And this uh, cotton production was so popular, which was given to West Asia, Central Asia, and to others. Well, I think there is very long, but I, uh, that will only one issue. Till 70s, we have been looking towards Mesopotamia and Iran, generally called West Asia, for the beginning of all the major cultural horizons in India and had borderlands. Beginning from 4000 BC and coming down to 400 BC, fair service, Alchin, Wheeler, Sankalia, Mughal, and others who worked hard to understand the dynamics of early culture in this part of the world again and again referred to Chatal, Huyuk, and Bogazkui in Turkey. Jarmo and Uri in Iraq, and Sialk, Hisar, and Shah Tepe in Iran. No one of them ever thought, except Mughal and Astana, that Central Asia is also a potential region with which South Asia interacted intimately. All archaeological findings of Central Asia were in Russian because uh, that was occupied by the Russia that time, Soviet Central Asia. So all research were in Russian language, but in 1972, those findings were published in English, then we were able, Indian scholars and other scholars, the great contribution in making this area of the uh, Central Asian countries, all countries, minerals and technology and other things also, that was first time highlighted. And what is this uh, Central Asia? Central Asia was a melting pot of people and cultures coming from all directions. Chinese from the east, Indians from the south, Iranians and greco roman from the west, and nomadic tribes from the north. Iranians, as we know of, from history, were inhabiting the Central Asia region up to Tajikistan. I remember the quotation of uh, Sarya Nidhi, a great Soviet archaeologist, when he was making excavation in Central Asia, he was comparing all those artifacts with a Western quotations. And his all Russian reports, because when the government of India sent me to Russia to collect all this material of the Central Asian excavations, that time I found that from Rigveda, from Avesta, each and every artifact was compared. And in history, what we say, if linguist, uh, textual linguistic evidence and archaeological evidence make juxtaposition, that becomes truth. Well, I think uh, before, Sahab, uh, have some time or? Uh, no, just. I think uh, it's enough for the, because this is a very long paper, which can be given for publication to the Department of Persian, because. Uh, my name was given by my friend, my 42 years old friend, Chandra Shekhar. We both had been in this university in BSA, Delhi College. He went to the Persian, I went to the Sanskrit. But we have had 40 years of the arts faculty in the arts faculty. And we researched and we knew that my interest in this is that the purpose of this life is to show that today's West is nothing. Only Iran made that Europe so powerful. This Arabic world, when all our scientific, Indian scientific texts were translated in 8th century by Abadi in Arabic. And we always say in the history, Iran is the fountainhead of the whole Western development. 
Just go by the Jorastian teachings. My teacher, professor at Oxford, the master told me, and he wrote again the article, that all teachings of uh, Christianity, Islam, and before that, are from Jorastian philosophy. No religion, no Semitic religion of uh, this world is without the influence of the Western philosophy. Such contribution given by this great area, India, West Asia, Iran, we, because we call this uh, socio-cultural history, when we separated we were Daivites, Deva, Pujak, and they were Asur Pujak. They not in bad sense as we today use. In the Gaveda, Asur word is used for the elder brother of the Deva and who is powerful. Fortified houses. First time Yezurved records. That Asuras made fortified houses. And we Daiva people, Indian Aryans, have to prepare such architecture. So we can't say that India has contributed a lot. No. India and Iran collectively created the history and development of this world. And again, Time will come and the University of Delhi, especially Department of Persian, Department of Arabic and Sanskrit Department, we all are working collectively to put forward the real truth of this great region. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Ramesh. Bardwaji, uh, for your excellent keynote address, and really you have opened new vistas for new researches in this field. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation. Hala bande istadam yukuna mas janab agaye Dr. Aliya Chagini, safire muhtara me Iran dar dehliye no ke lutfan tashif beavarando. باپ فارمائی شاتے خودشون مارو سر افراز فرمائیند من ایشان را بے این ابیاد دعوت می کنم کہ داغ بر دل زی غم لال ازاری دارم پیچو تابس کشیشو کشیش زلف نگاری دارم یار می آیدو ہنگام نسار است مرا مرو اے جان گرامی بتکاری دارم Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is pity to talk, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, all dear professors here, it's very pity and bad for us when we talk about India and Iran relationship and what a, what a good presentation by dear Professor Ramesh regarding the Indo-Iran and means globally culture and civilization talking, but we are talking with a Western language. That's bad for us, all of us. <laughs> and it is bad for me to not talk with you in Hindi or, or in Persian, and both of us, we should understand Persian and Hindi. Almost 50% is understandable with, with each other, normally. It is bad, but this is on us and on the professor shelters to revive this relation. Since uh, that man in Western country mentioned the spot and fight among civilization, we react reacted immediately and our president in that time said we should have dialogue among civilization, not fight among civilization. Because during the history, when we see the dialogue among civilization like Iran, India, China, Western, even that at that time, Rome, the so we said, Yunnan, and Egypt, that was making civilizations. As mentioned, very well mentioned by Professor 
that the columns of civilization nobody can deny. The one is India and one is Iran. And we cannot say impact on India and Iran or Iran and India. No, civilization are giving and take. So we took a lot from India. We took the good thing and India took the good thing from us. So that means win-win exchange of knowledge. So may I welcome all of the professors, all my teachers here, some guests that I saw, the new figures from Iran, from Uzbekistan, from Central Asian country, from Tajikistan, and my brothers and sisters, good students and researchers here. So I welcome all of you. I will mention three points or four from Persian language, from some very famous figures in this literature. And they will talk about our today's problem. I don't want about the, the, the talk about the very, very, very important linguistic. All of you, you know the civilization and what happened. Of course, astronomy in India was great. Medicine was great. Iran was great. Yunnan was great. So Iran was the bridge sometimes between Hindi and Yunnan. So in India, you say it, uh, medicine, Yunanite, but we say traditional. That means we accept some more Indian rather than, 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 than the Greek one. So let me present this way by Rumi, alayhi rahma. He say, Bishnu az nei chun hekayat mi konad, vaz judai ha shikayat mi konad. Even if you listen to this cane, sugar cane, but have been as a flute, when you hear well speaking about the separations between the civilization, not only the human being, but civilizations. Talking and just giving the narrative of very bad separation of the dialect and civilizations and human beings from each other. And we see the result now in our day, today. We see how the civilized, so-called civilized people fighting each other, killing each other in the name of civilization, in the name of, I don't know, this and that and that and that, in the name of, in the name of religion. In the name of religion killed each other. I see one brother sick here, one Sardarji here, so you, I, I, I read very well Guru Nanak book. Half of it is in Persian. And using all these beauties of Persian to take coexisting brothership and being friends to each other, help each other. And we see Saadi Abuzorg, great Saadi. Tuk az mehnat digaran bi ghami nashayat kenamad nahand adami. بنی آدم اعضای یک پیکرند که در آفرینش از یک گوهرند There is no racism because all of us we are one from one source from one mind که در آفرینش when God created us created us from one mind not different no racism no differences God put us in differences to know each other. God created us as a flower, difference between the flowers. If you, saw, you see a garden, there is only one type of flower. It's not enjoyable. But when you see different flowers, you will enjoy. Each flower has, is, has its own perfume. Look, in this beautiful hall, you can see different figures. Ladies, men, in different shape. That's beauties of creature. Bani Adam azaw ye yek pey karan ke dar afarinesh ze yek gauharan cho uzvi be dard avarat rozegar degar uzvha ra namanat qarar. If this part of my body got some pain, all my body will react to help this one. Is really now in our day now we are like that. So if we go to another poem, we say we can say Iran, India, 
And for what use for that? We should see the result. If Hafez Buzurg, great Hafez says, اگر آن ترک شیرازی فرام شیراز و این ترک به دست آورد دل ما را به خال هندویش بخشم سمرقند و بخارا را That means the mixture of civilization No talk about Turk, Arab, Hindi, Irani, no We are all the same اگر آن ترک شیرازی به دست آرد دل ما را به خال هندویش There is one Turk in Shiraz He has one Hindu خال in his front به دست آرد دل ما را به خال هندویش بخشم سمرقند و بخارا را In Saudi awards I given what is point from Hafez Just mention about civilization talk and exchange between Iran and India and he said now that was in I don't know 600-700 years ago but right now is a description for us the world now is sick he said مزاج دهر تبه شد از این بلا حافظ now the world is sick کجاست فکر حکیمی و رعی برحمنی حکیم means ایرانی means intellectual a scientist from Iran and a برحمن from India should come and sit down and find the solution for our world right now so if we should talk, it is not only claim. Yes, we were like this, like that. What are now we? We have such a big identity. But what use for today? Only talking, yes, Rumi, Hafez, Saadi, this, that, I think is not enough. We should take that knowledge to our day to day and to use it to treat the world sicknesses. During the history, if you go to Avesta, before Islam, after Islam, all this production of scientists from Iran, India, and like this, they are only want to help the people. Governance, good governance, beautiful, Production of civilization to help mankind and human being in his welfare. It is not only medicine. It is not astronomy. Even to play with each other, friendship, shatranj. How to play with each other? It is some some imaginable fight, but it's not a real fight. Let's. They fight to each other, now we, we fight to each other. We enjoy the fight of that. So this shatranj means that. In the same time to make it. So textile. Root of silk. This is for his. The silk road, what means? The biggest one was from India to Iran and to go to West. But. If somebody asks me, so what about India? So I say Persian language is not Iranian language. Persian language is our Eastern language. We can say Persian language somehow is Indian language too, because Indian have a big impact on that to create some new style in Persian language. We say Sabcha Hindi. So Amir Khosrow Dehlavi, Bidele Dehlavi, the others, they created this one. We are proud of that. So that's, I'm thankful to the government of India that take the, in the Persian language as a classic language in India because you need this language to address to your very wealthy heritage that written in Persian, in astronomy, in medicine, in mathematics. Your heritage is in Persian. So who want to use that? 
Only you put it in the figures in the museum, you see this is book written. What is inside? And the most impact of colonialism on India to cut this chain between the old generation and new generation. So it is a must for universities, not only in India, in Iran, in different, to revive this language at least to use our heritage. This is the key of that. So it is not only Sufism. Sufism, if you go to Allame Taba Tabai, the big commenter of Holy Quran, he is talking about Upanishad philosophy. If Upanishad was before Islam. And he's, he was studying Upanishad. And you don't believe now a day in Qom, in some religious school, we are studying Upanishad. Maybe in India, nobody follow. As a course in, in Iran, we are following, because there is the very close relation between the Sufism and, and Irfan in Iran and is in Islam between the old and present civilization and some understanding of that. We should understand the past, and we need this language. Persian language is not for Iran, it's for Uzbekistan, it's for Tajikistan, it's for everybody to go to their past to see what happened this during the history and use it and serve the human being right now in the, our days. Of course, political borders like this, like that, that respected. Nobody wants to take the flags. Culture, there is no border for culture. There is no border for humanity. There is no border for understanding and helping mankind. One more than 100, because Ferdowsi is one of the big documents for us in pure Persian language. Professors are here and they know about that. More than 100 times, Professor Ghassami is here, mentioned about Hind, Sindh, and Mukran. That means the importance at that time also, the giving, taking the knowledge from each other. So I do believe not this conference and congratulate the organizer and thanks for this very good professor conference that you paid should be repeated. <laughs> should be repeated and repeated and repeated to find and to see and show to the students, professors, researchers, what happened and how we can take it as a heritage, as an asset for future. So Professor Alim Ashraf Khan, he given something good about Bahar and Nowruz. Now we are going on the eve of Nowruz. So I will ask him to again repeat that very beauties of Nowruz. Baam dadan ke tafawud nakonad leil o nahar khush bubad daman sahra wo tamashaye Bahar. He will repeat the same poem that he read it and should translate it into that. That is very beauties of Nowruz. So Nowruz is our common heritage also in this area. It's not only one Iranian. I'm very happy that UN also recognized as a Eastern and the, the day of world, the day of land, the day of Greeny. Nowruz is Iranian, Indian, Uzbek, Tajik. All these civilizations, they recognize Nowruz as an identity for them. Because this is the time of not only human beings, the time of creature and, 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 and nature that take the balance to each body and everybody. So may I welcome you, thanks again to this very beautiful seminar, very full seminar. And thank you for understanding me and son, giving this time to me, sir. And thanks. <laughs> To see again such a beautiful seminar, useful, will be repeated. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your excellent presentation and your points were really wonderful and we are Sure, we are in future also we will uh, hold this type of international gatherings. But still we are looking forward for your meaningful interaction in upcoming seminars, sir. Because you are so generous 
and whenever we call you, you please, you are, you. No, no, sir, not at all. You are not a student. You are ambassador, His Excellency. So thank you very much, sir. Hala bande takase dara mas ustade ali makam janab agaye professor Muhammad Kazime Kehdui ustade Danishgai yazd ishun chand bar ustade ezami dar shibekarre budan wo yeki az shaksiyat haiye bar jaste da arsiya dabiyat farsi astan man ishon da davat bidam ke lutfan tashif biyavaran was farbaishate khodeshon mara mustafid gardanan. من ایشان را با ابیاتی چند صدا می کنم کہ مکانم لا مکان باشد نشانم بھی نشان باشد نہ تن باشد نہ جان باشد کہ من از جان جانانم دوئی از خود بیدار کردم یکی دیدم دو عالم را یکی جویم یکی دانم یکی بینم یکی خانم جناب پروفیسور قاضی میں کہہ دوئی سلام علیکم و رحمت الله با نام و یاد خداوند بزرگ رئیس محترم دانشگاه سفیر محترم رؤسای دپارتمان ها و گروه ها با اجازه شما و با اجازه حضار محترم ممکن است شما یک کم ترجمه کنید کمک من دوستان بفهمند من صحبت خیلی دارم میخوام شما بفهمید دیگه بالاخره یه روزی با استاد در یک کلاس بودیم ما 27 سال پیش بله خب اگر شما بله حالا من فکر می‌کنم احتیاج بعضی شو شما بفرمایید چشم احتیاج نیست من اول از رئیس محترم دانشگاه عذرخواهی می‌کنم شما اگر عرق شرم بر پیشانی من نمی‌بینید هوای اینجا اون رو برداشته درونم شرم دارم که دیر رسیدم ما شنیده بودیم ایشان آن تایمند بله. ببخشید ما در فضای شهر و مجازی گم شدیم سر هی فیل سوری اباوت دیت هی از بیت لیت اینڈ دیو تو دا ترافیک آف دیس سٹی هی از سیئنگ دیت هی از ویری ویری مچ دسترب دیو تو دا ترافیک بعضی در خودشان گم می شوند یہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ مطلب میں اپنے آپ میں گم ہو گیا تھا کہ میں کہاں ہوں بعضی در بیابان گم می شوند کچھ لوگ بیابان یعنی جنگل میں سو جاتے ہیں کھو جاتے ہیں ما در شهر و در فضای مجازی گم شدیم ہم جو ہیں صرف کمپیوٹر اور فضای مجازی جو کمپیوٹر اس طرح کی چیزیں ہیں نیٹ ہے ان میں گم ہو گئے عذر ما رو بپذیرید مان لیجئے کہہ رہے ہیں کہ ہماری آنے بات کر لیجئے امیر خسرو می گوید من تو شدم تو من شدی من تن شدم تو جان شدی تا کس نگوید بعد از این من دیگرم تو دیگری یکی معلوم هی؟ الحمدلله خسرو غریب است و گدا افتاده در شهر شما باید که از روی وفا سوی غریبان بنگری دوستان ما اهل دانه علم اهل فرهنگ مانند درختانی هستیم که بین ما دیوارها کشیدند اینا رو چای انشاره ای نیست بگید که بین ما رو دیوارها کشیده اند اما در زیر زمین ریشه ما و در آسمان برگ و شاخ و بار ما به هم متصلند دریغ هم میاد اینو نگید استاد آره خیلی خوب بسیار خوب بنابراین اون چه که ما رو به هم نزدیک می کند دانش و فرهنگ ماست استاد از چند قرن سخن گفتن ما از زمانی که پنچا تنترا کلیل و دمنه ترجمه شد حدود 1500 سال پیش و بعد حدود 900 سال پیش بیش از 900 سال پیش به فارسی ترجمه شد ما در حقیقت بیشتر همدیگر رو شناختیم در شهر من یزد در ایران بسیاری الفاظ و کلمه های هندی به کار میرن میگویند دلی والا فلانی بمبای والا دلی والا هه بمبای والا هه یه کیاه یه یه باوه این باسو این سانسکریت باسو این اردو باو 
in my city also باو یه پنجره ها پنجره خب اینا خب فرهنگ من نمیخوام تأثیر فرهنگ ها رو خیلی چون قدمت و استادان محترم فرمودن نگاهی به خال هندو گفتند اگر آن طور که شیرازی به دست دارد دل ما را این خال هندو من به معبد رفتم معابد مختلف در برابر رام کریشنا رام سیتا کریشنا رادا و رحمان بیشنو او میان و تعظیم میکنن بعد در پایان اون کسی نشسته یک انگشت از اون تیلک که میگذارد بله به پیشانی This is خال هندو یعنی خال اخلاص یعنی وقتی یک عبادت کننده تمام عبادت ها انجام داد به مرحله نهایت رسید اخلاص رسید حافظ میگوید من دو عالم را سمرقند دنیا بخارا آن دنیا به او میبخشم به کی کسی که به اخلاص رسیده باشد بنابراین در شهر ما یک خانمی میگفت من سه پسر دارم One lady said I have two sons Two is the foreign دو نفر در خارجند and one is in hind دو پسر من خارج رفتند یک پسر در هندوستان است یعنی بین ما و هندوستان جدایی نیست ما یکی هستیم یعنی وقتی که آمدیم اینجا من بیش از پانزده بار more than 15 time I came to India all around Amritsar to Bijapur to Mumbai to Calcutta Rampur Patna Delhi everywhere I went I think this is my city my country in چی هست؟ این فرهنگ است فرهنگ ما اونقدر مشترک است اونقدر یگانه است که احساس جدایی نمی کنیم من مسلمانم استاد راجین در کمار هندو با هم کتابی را تحصیم می کنیم ویشنو پورانا درست میگم؟ کتاب ویشنو پورانا یکی از کتاب های مهم فلسفی و عرفانی هندوان ولی ما اسلام میکنیم با هم کار میکنیم این مهم هست درباره چندر من کایته برحمن چندر من کایته بیدل مدهپوری رایت نرگسستان نرگسستان ترانسلیت آف رامایان من تحصیح کردم آی ایدیتد ایت درباره داتارام برحمن حدود 180 years ago right دستور پارسی اور صرف پارسی من تسی کردم هر درباره برهمن ها بسیار کار می کنیم و بدون مشکل و این هنر ماست این هنر ماست که بتوانیم قلب ها رو به هم نزدیک کنیم مولانا می فرماید پس زبان همدلی خود دیگر است من بیت دیگرش را میگویم همزبانی خیشی و پیوندی است مرد با نامحرمان چون بندی است شما میروید در فلان کشور یک باره میبینید به هندی حرف میزنه آب کانام کی آهه آه میری بنگلادش اپنی آه یو وقتی زبان یکی شما بلا فاصله خوش به 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 خوشحال می شوید. چرا زبان؟ همین زبان ما را به هم نزدیک کرده. من در بنگلادش رفتم. 27 years ago I went to Dhaka, Bangladesh. In a car of university, one professor said, where are you from? I told him, Iran. Oh, Iran! جی سعدی رحمت الله علی، خیام رحمت الله علی، فردوسی رحمت الله علی، حافظ رحمت الله علی. What is this? Oh, in relation, culture, civilization, in فرهنگ ماست که با هم است. من خیلی از میخوام در حضور بزرگان و استادان مختلف از کشورهای مختلف من در برابر همه تعظیم میکنم. من خیلی شاگرد کوچک مکتب زبان و ادبیات فارسی هستم. 
بکوشیم تا با این زبان با این فرهنگ با این تمدن دلها رو به هم نزدیک کنیم دوستانی که از ازبکستان آمدند از خوجند خانم قفاراوا آمده از تاجیکستان آمدند از همه جا خوش آمد میگیم ما و شما در یک آبشخور یا یک چشم آب می نوشیم ممنون و سپاسگزارم ببخشید تشکر ویجی برای استاد کازم کہدوئی ابراز می نمائیم کہ ہر وقت ایشان سخن می گوین واقعی گل می پاشن یک بیت برای فرمائشات ایشان بیت بخونم کہ به ہر زمینی کے نقش کف پائے تو بود به ہر زمینی کے نقش کف پائے تو بود سالہ سجدہ گہ صاحب نظران خات شد Now before presidential address, we are having release of books and for that I have to announce that Jism to Khaak hai aur Khaak mein mil jaye ga. Jism to Khaak hai aur Khaak mein mil jaye ga. Main bahar hal kitabo mein milun ga tumko. Itni important hai kitabe humare liye. Hum mar jayenge, hum Khaak ho jayenge, lekin humari kitabe Khaak nahi hongi. اس امید کے ساتھ ہر آدمی اپنا اپنا کام میں لگا ہوا ہے اور کتابیں تحریر کر رہا ہے فارسی وبھاگ دلی بشو دیالے ہر ورش ایک ریسرچ جنرل پرکاشت کرتا ہے جس کا نام مجلے تحقیقات فارسی ہے اس جنرل کی ایک وشیشتہ یہ ہے کہ اس میں پرکاشت ہونے والے سارے شود پتر کیول فارسی باشا میں ہوتے ہیں جس میں ایران افغانستان تاجکستان سے پروفیسرز کے شود پتر سمبلیت ہوتے ہیں کرونا پینڈمک کے کارن دو ہزار بیس اکیس کا جنڈل کچھ دیری سے پرکاشت ہوا ہے اور ورش دو ہزار اکیس بائیس کا پرکاشن سمیں پر ہوا ہے میں اپنی کلیگ ڈاکٹر میتاب جہاں سے ریکویسٹ کرتا ہوں کہ وہ اوپر آئیں اور دو ہزار بیس اکیس کے جنڈل کا ویموچن کروائیں ڈاکٹر میتاب جہاں اصل میں آج کے اس پروگرام میں چار بکس ریلیز ہونی تھی سب سے آخر میں میں نے اپنا نام رکھا تھا میرا بھی ایک جنرل ہے اس میں جو دو ہزار اکیس بائیس والا ہے وہ بھی ہے اسی طرح سے میں اور جو کتاب پستکیں ہیں ان میں ایک ہمارے دھرم دیو ڈاکٹر دھرم دیو سوامی صاحب ہیں ویشادر صاحب وہ اسی سال کے ہمارے بزرگ ہیں اور دھرم دیو سوامی صاحب کیا ہال میں تشریف رکھتے ہیں آپ آ جائیے آئیے اور یہ فارسی سے ان کا کوئی اس طرح کا رشتہ نہیں ہے کہ انہوں نے ایم اے فارسی میں کیا ہے یا کچھ اور کیا ہے لیکن انہوں نے اس اسی سال کے عمر میں بھی فارسی سے ان کی محبت جاری ہے اب تک تقریباً کوئی دس کتابیں اسے زیادہ انہوں نے ہندی سنسکرت اور ہندی کی کتابوں کو فارسی کا جامعہ پہنایا ہے اور جو پستک آپ کے پاس ہے وہ وہ ہمارے پون پتر ہنمان جی کی ہنمان چالیسہ ہے جس کو انہوں نے سوامی جی نے فارسی میں ترجمہ کیا ہے وہ شائری میں ہے وہ شیر ہے لیکن انہوں نے اس کو نصر میں کیا ہے واقعی ان کو دیکھ کے وہ دل چاہتا ہے کہ کہا جائے کہ با عمل چوم چکے چاند ستاروں کی جبی اور بے عمل ہاتھ کی ریکہ میں مقدر دیکھیں سوامی جی کی عمر اسی سال ایک اور ہمارے شاگرد سٹوڈنٹ ہیں ہمارے چندرگپ جی ڈاکٹر چندرگپ سنسکرت میں پی ایجڈی ہیں اور فارسی سے شوق رکھتے ہیں فارسی پڑھ رہے ہیں انہوں نے رومی کی تقریباً کوئی ایک سو پچیس کہانیوں کو انہوں نے ہندی میں اس کا انواد کیا ہے
सर इसी के साथ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पर्शियन ने एक सुवेनियर तैयार किया है वो आप मेहमानों की खिदमत में पेश करना चाहता है मैं प्रोफेसर अलीगर साहब से दरख्वास्त करता हूँ कि वो सुवेनियर दिया जाए प्लीज Ah, thank you very much, all the dignitaries and guests. for your valuable and precious time for this release of books respected professor yogesh singh ji vice chancellor delhi vishwavidyalay evam aaj ke do divasiy antarrashtriya sanghoshthi ke udghatan samaroh ke adhyaksh aaj subah se hamare beech baithe hain sir hum aapke bahut aabhari hain main aapko hindi urdu aur bhartiya sabhyata se कुछ भेंट करके अध्यक्षीय भाषण के लिए आमंत्रित करना चाहता हूं उर्दू के एक शायर ने कहा है मैं एक मुद्दत से उर्दू के समुद्र के किनारे जो रेते में चबकते हैं वो जर्रे छानता हूं सजा के और सुनिए सर एक और शेर है सजा के प्यार का सिंदूर और जला के दिए कॉन्सेप्ट देखें आप सजा के प्यार के सिंदूर और जला के दिए गजल ने मुझको पुकारा है सुहागनों की तरह वो सामने मस्जिद है उस ओर शिवाला है इन दोनों मकानों में तेरा ही उजाला है गालिब ने बनारस की शान में एक मसनबी लिखी है फारसी में मसनबी चरागे देर जिसमें बनारस को उसने काब हिंदुस्तान कहा है कहता है इबादत खान नाकूसियान हमाना काब हिंदुस्तान प्लीज सर अध्यक्षीय भाषण के लिए मैं आपको आमंत्रित करता हूं आइए सर प्लीज good afternoon good afternoon to all of you his excellency mr ali chengi the honorable ambassador of islamic republic of iran new delhi professor mohammad kazim department of persian language and literature yaz university iran professor ramesh gaur dean academics of uh, indira gandhi national center for arts and my old friend professor rajendra kumar head of uh, persian department university of delhi professor ramesh bharadwaj department of sanskrit university of delhi dr ali akbar shah assistant professor of persian university of delhi and uh, secretary of the persian foundation professor ali masaf khan former head of the department of persian studies and a very very you know wonderful moderator and anchor invited guest faculty members my teacher colleagues and my dear students good afternoon again 
Today is the international seminar on the impact of Indic civilization of Persian civilization. Impact of Indic civilization on Persian civilization. And uh, the topic is very interesting, important, and relevant. Why it is re relevant? Because we know that the world order is changing very fast. And in this new world order, we have to find our place, our position, and we have to adjust ourselves. That's why the topic is very important, relevant, and very, very timely. If we want to analyze the impact of Indic civilization on uh, Persian civilization, but the sub-themes, when I was going through the sub-themes of this conference, first is the India's glorious past that impacted the world at large. Glorious past of India that impacted world at large. India's impact on Persian language and culture Potentiality of India becoming Vishwaguru in current times. Potentiality of India to become Vishwaguru in the current times. We all know that, and many speakers have told, Indic civilization and uh, Persian civilizations are very, very old civilization. Now, my problem is slightly very different here. I am neither a scholar of Persian language, nor Sanskrit, nor a person of literature. Uh, I am here because I am the vice chancellor of the university. And uh, then when uh, Professor Rajendra and uh, other professors came to me, and they say we are organizing an international conference on this topic, the like topic is very interesting, the impact of uh, Indic civilization. Then I said, please give me some talking points. And I wanted to understand the whole subject, because for me, it is very new. I am a student of software engineering. I, but I do understand humanity. I do understand word order. I also do understand the importance of India and Iran and their togetherness in the world order. These things I do understand. <laughs> then ask them, please give me some talking points also. Then they gave me a few books and talking points and all. I was going through. It was not easy. But you know, fortunately, what happened, most of the points already, most of the points are covered. Most of the points are covered because they are very, very generic in nature. They were giving uh, to me because, of, uh, because they know that I am, I, I, I am very, very new to the area of this uh, study of impact and the literature effect and impact on civilizations. Then I thought yesterday, let me, let me Google and find something for me. Because uh, I know I have to speak as a last speaker. It happens, you know, and you know, I, and most of the wonderful speakers have already spoken. Then I Google the impact of Indic civilization on, that was, I, I wrote on Google, impact of Indic civilization on Persian civilization. But you know, surprisingly, most of the literature which came out of that was effect of Persian civilization on Indic civilization. <laughs> So many papers, so many books, so many effects, so many impact. Because, OK, but your topic is just different. Reverse. But I could not find many research publications. One side is good number. And in India, we are also realizing the impact and effect. We understand also. But when it comes to the other side, lots, uh, what I, I, I felt through Google, that lots and many things are required to be done. And I hope that that's why the department has, must have selected this reverse order uh, impact, which they want to understand the reverse order impact of Indic civilization on Persian civilization. Although uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador has rightly said, it cannot be a one way. It has to be two way. Whenever we are doing interaction, cooperation, coordination, it has to be two way. So that's why this topic is very, very relevant. And I hope that when you will discuss, you will find new ways and means. But then immediately, one word, as an outsider of the whole concept, one person name came in my mind, that is Dara Shikho. Because recently, uh, the uh, one, uh, one uh, road has been dedicated to Dara Shikho in Delhi. Although, you know, I have some little contribution in that. Reason is, you know, when I was the vice chancellor of MS University, Baroda, one Gujarati uh, 
Mr. Shah came to me that my dream is there should be a road in, uh, uh, in the name of Dara Shikoh in Delhi, although we don't have. There should be a, he was a scholar, a scholar who translated 50 Upanishads in, uh, from Sanskrit to Persian in 1657, translated Bhagavad Gita, Sanskrit to Persian, and his contribution is immense, and we have not recognized that contribution. So there should be a road. Okay, good, there should be a road, yes, no problem. But what do you want from me? As a vice chancellor of uh, uh, MS University Badada, what do you want from me? He said, you, I will prepare a proposal for you. You may not have that, uh, you may not have time and inclination, but please, I will prepare a proposal for you and you submit to the government of India, that proposal. Then I submitted to the, the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, the pro same proposal, and fortunately, now there is a road in the name of Dharashiko. <laughs> One name immediately came to my mind, the, the person who has contributed, impacted the Persian civilization. And from there, this knowledge went to European countries. He provided, he constructed that bridge between India and Europe through Persia. India has uh, brought much to the world, no doubt about it, because we are the old civilization. Now also we are is a country of 140 crore people. So our contribution is not hamara. So we are the old civilization and number is also very large. Yes, we have impacted world. We have uh, done many, many good things and uh, authors have already, many, many speakers have already told. But you know, the treatment through herbs and plants Although, uh, uh, although not that popular, which it should have been. I don't want to go th to the reasons. But uh, one thing uh, which uh, Anchor said about uh, is the Vasudhev Kutumbukam. Like India has given many things, science, technology, flana, bahut saradiya. But the point is the ideas of India, which are jo, the Vasudhev Kutumbukam, means what? Word is one word, one family, for everyone. It means what? We should respect each other, trust each other, understand each other. That is the meaning of Vasudhaev Kutumbakam. And uh, I was just remembering a poem written by Atal Bihari Vajpayee. When uh, your third theme, which is potentiality of India to become Vishwaguru in current scenario. We used to be Vishwaguru. Aisa log bolte hain. We used to be Vishwaguru, but now the potentiality that you have to debate and discuss. But Vajpayee Ji has said about India and the culture of Indian culture. Say, Main tej punj, Main tej punj tamlin jagat mein failaya maine prakash. Main tej punj tamlin jagat mein failaya maine prakash. Jagdi ka rach karke vinash kav chaha maine nij ka vikas. Sharanagat ki raksha ki hai maine apna jeevan dekar. Sharanagat ki raksha ki hai maine apna jeevan dekar. Vishwas yadini aata to sakshi hai itihas amar. So it means what? If someone came to India for help, India has provided that help. Indian culture has provided that help. This is a real contribution to India. But you know, there are many, uh, when we say, for Sudhaev Kutumbukam, there is also a Sanskrit shlok which we should practice. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu nirameha, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, the meaning is, may everyone be happy. May everyone be healthy. May everyone see what is and may not, what is auspicious. And may no one suffer. It means what? Good for everyone. This is the fundamental principle of humanity. And in the new world order, which will emerge very soon, India and Iran can play a role in that. And why I'm saying this, both are old civilizations, we have very common, India and Indians, and uh, Irani, uh, Iranians and Iran, both have their own problems, but you know, how can we strengthen the ties? How can we work together? How can we find common platforms? How can we find policies and strengthen those ancient tie-ups? with India and Iran, whatever are the political turmoil here and there, but we should understand that in the larger interest of humanity, we should work together. That is 
that should be the spirit of any international seminar when we say the effect and impact of civilizations. This we have to keep in mind. Another principle which is very important, Iran should also follow. In India also we hardly follow that, but uh, we should follow. Like the principle for administration, there is a Sanskrit slok, very old. I try to practice, but you know, I'm, I'm also saying very, very difficult, and which is in administration, in governance, when we say the good governance, and our His Excellency has said about the good governance, the karman ne vadhikaraste maa phaleshu kadachana. Aap me se bhoat logo ne suna hooga? Suna hai kichu logo ne? Nahi suna. Bhagavad Gita ka shlok hai ki karman ne vadhikaraste maa phaleshu kadachana, maa karm phal hetu bhurmate sango sattva karmani. Meaning is what? To work, you have the right. But not the fruits thereof. Let not the fruits of action be your motive, nor let your attachments be the cause of inaction. That should be the principle. Ek film aiti Hindi mein, usme tha, karm kiye ja fal ki icha mat rakhre insaan. Jaise karm karega, vaise fal dega insaan. Haan, vaise fal dega bhagwan. The point is, if I am doing something, I should not attach my motive into that. But if I don't have any motive, I will not do anything. That is also not good. What for me? What for me? So in the administration, what do I do? Why should I implement this? What are the advantages? I, am, I will get out of it. No. God has given you a place of decision making. Please take those decisions. Keeping in mind this slope, which is very, very important for administration, this is also India's contribution. If other countries follow, we should also follow. So then things will improve. And we all know India was a prosperous country and could maintain 36% of the world GDP for 1,300 years. 36% GDP of world GDP for 300 years, 300 BC to 1000 AD. Right now, we are struggling for 3%. Imagine a country where GDP share was 36%. Now, we are struggling for 3%. When we got independence in 1947, it was 1%. Such a degradation in economic conditions of the country. When these Britishers came, at that time also, it was about 20%. We have to think about it and take corrective actions. And this GDP was primarily one of the important factors was the trade. We were exporting many, many things from India. But this is not possible without research, without inventions, without doing new things. It is just not possible. This also we have to think about it. And uh, as someone has mentioned about the root was the silk route in ancient time when we were maintaining this. And uh, uh, Professor uh, Ramesh, head of Sanskrit, he's, he was talking about the cotton. I don't know how many of you know when these Britishers came to India, they had not seen cotton. One of the British philosophers has written in his book that these Indians are very clever. The wool which we are getting from sheep, they are growing in plants. यानी भारत के लोग बड़े चालाक अजीब हैं जो हम भेड़ से ऊन लेते हैं ये पेड़ों पे उगाते हैं। But this is a silk route, cotton route. It means India, Iran, Central Asia. This was not new to us. Knowledge can come from anywhere. When we were producing knowledge, our GDP was 36 percent. When we are, we have become a country of only usage of others' knowledge, our GDP is 3 percent. Time has come where we have to focus on new things, new initiatives, new experiments for the purpose of humanity and goodness at large for the world. And as I, as I, I told you that I was on the Google, then I, uh, I thought, let me find some words, very, very interesting words of Persian, which are very common in Indian language, which we use uh, on day-to-day -day basis without, reali without realizing that these are not our words, they are Persian words. That is the beauty of the language. That is the beauty of the language. 
जिला तालुका जामिन बदाम पिस्ता जायदाद फौजदारी दीवानी अदालत इंसाफ यू आर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ पर्शियन लैंग्वेज आपके पास और बहुत सारे होंगे दिल दिमाग जिंदगी जबान खुद एंड द कंपाउंड नाउन्स विच वर कमिंग आउट ऑफ अरबिक पर्शियन एंड संस्कृत फर्स्ट इज नौकरी धंधो वन इज इज वन इज कमिंग फ्रॉम पर्शियन अदर इज कमिंग फ्रॉम संस्कृत नफो टोटो मेवा मिठाई दाना पानी इट मीन्स मिक्सचर ऑफ टू लैंग्वेजेस विच हिज एक्सेलेंसी इज ऑल्सो रेफरिंग टू दिस कम्बिनेशन न्यू वर्ड्स वर इमर्ज ड्यू टू कम्बिनेशन ऑफ द कल्चर एंड देर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स विच आर वेरी वेरी कॉमन एंड वी हैव रिच पर्शियन लिटरेचर इन पर्शियन लैंग्वेज इन यूनिवर्सिटी लाइब्रेरीज बट द टाइम हैज कम वी हैव नॉट ओनली टू ट्रांसलेट दैम बट वी शुड फाइंड वेज टू digitize them preserve them protect them for the coming generations otherwise those who will follow us will not for, will not forgive us for our tardiness and negligence this is a very very important work which is to be done by the indian university system because because ancient literature may not be useful today who knows that may be very very important tomorrow when george bully invented a mathematics zero and one George Bully is the inventor of uh, the mathematics zero and one, where zero, one, two is uh, two is one zero, three is one one, like that. So two only two with two symbols. Everyone laughed at George Bully. कि उसका दिमाग खराब हो गया. It has no relevance. Why is he doing it? And the poor fellow could not get recognition during his lifetime. But now we all know that this Boolean algebra. designed by george bully is in the foundation of total digital technology and computer science total he is the father figure found in foundations of all most of the world's inventions now only after 50 years of his death so we really don't know what is what is there we should pre protect preserve such things which are very very important and, and and lastly you know some persian words of sanskrit origin i worked on this some persian words of sanskrit origin for example first is ahar in persian and sanskrit word is alpahar then bar in persian war in sanskrit tap and tapasya in sanskrit tap in persian same vat is wind in sanskrit bad wind in persian yovan in sanskrit jawan in persian all are similar words it means many many things are similar that is your subject you will uh, but now my request to all of you that we should work hard find a, find and ways and means for joint collaborations with the uh, our ancient heritage we should not forget that and and think about that how can we strengthen the relationship relationship of india and iran they are necessary for humanity they are necessary for new world order which is changing very fast and which will emerge very soon and india and indians are very fond of iran and iranians and vice versa also we should keep that in mind and work in that direction for cooperation and coordination for the welfare of humanity i hope that discussions will take place and humanity will get something very different something very useful and meaningful in 21st century which people say digital century people say computer century but no humanity is more important than that was in 20th century we have to keep in mind my good wishes to the organizers and all those who are here thank you very much uh thank you very much sir for your sparing precious time for this conference and congratulations for your excellent presidential address uh now for a very difficult task that is concluding remarks and vote of thanks i call upon my colleague dr ali akbar shah secretary persian foundation of india and convener of this student international seminar I invite him with the couplet mushkilein kuch bhi nahi azme jama ke aage mushkilein kuch bhi nahi azme jama ke aage hausle ahni deewar gira dete hain ali akbar shah
چمن میں اختلاط رنگ و بو سے بات بنتی ہے چمن میں اختلاط رنگ و بو سے بات بنتی ہے ہم ہی ہم ہیں تو کیا ہم ہیں تم ہی تم ہو تو کیا تم ہو آپ نے بہت سارے اردو کپلیٹ پڑھے تو میں نے سمجھا کہ اس کا جواب دیا جائے اور یہ ہمارا جو کانسیپٹ ہے وہ بھی اسی پہ بیسڈ ہے جس شعر کو میں نے آپ کے سامنے پڑھا دا پریزیڈنٹ آف دا سیشن انریبل وائس چانسلر یونیورسٹی آف ڈیلہی ایٹ دا ویری آؤٹ سیٹ آئی جسٹ وانٹ ٹو پوائنٹ آؤٹ ون تھنگ وچ آئی ہیو آبزرڈ اینڈ آئی تھنک موسٹ آف یو آلسو ہیو آبزرڈ دا سیم فیکٹ دیٹ او آنریبل وائس چانسلر پوسیس سچ اے وزڈم اینڈ وچ از اے ریئر مکسچر آف انٹلیکٹ اینڈ ایڈمنسٹریشن وین ایور وی گاٹ دا اپارچونیٹی ٹو ٹاک ٹو ہم آ ہیئر ٹو ہم وی گاٹ بینیفٹ اٹ اینڈ اٹس ریئلی اے میٹر آف آنر اینڈ پرائڈ فاس ٹو ورک ان این انسٹیٹیوشن ویئر یو آر لیڈنگ سر اینڈ وی آر تھینک فل فار یو دیٹ یو اسپیئر ٹائم فرام یور ویری بیزی شیڈیول وی آر آل ویل اویئر and we hope that in future also we will receive this warm patronage from your side bande as rais as safir e muhtaram hai jamhuri e islami e iran dar hind nis tashakkur mi konam va man bayad in ro be farsi begoyam chon shoma farmudid ke ma na bayad az zaban e begangan istifade bokonim va in ham yek no qulami hast و این واقعیت هست که سفارت جمهوری اسلامی ایران هر وقت که ما خواستیم شما تشریف آوردید سرپرستی فرمودید و ما واقعا متشکر هستیم نه تنها سفارت جمهوری اسلامی ایران بلکه خانه فرهنگ جمهوری اسلامی ایران هم همین طور آقای دکتر شکر اللهی رئیس مرکز تحقیقات خانه فرهنگ هم اینجا تشریف دارن و من واقعا از شماها تشکر می کنم که شما در جمع های ما به ماها می پوندید I also extend my warm thanks though Professor Ramesh Chandra is also a host but the dedication the love he extended while we were planning the seminar so that was re really appreciable so I am thankful to you sir for your support and for understanding this very important concept and that this is need of our to revive our bilateral ties with our neighboring countries and IGNCA always has extended their patronage their help but particularly towards Persian department and Persian language we normally don't see that government organization feel that importance in Persian language but there are few institutions and people who are well aware of their past and importance of this language so i'm very thankful to you sir i'm also thankful to professor kazim kehdoi mandubari bhai be farsi as shoma tashakkur bokonam shoma dar hali ke khode keshwar hind vatan dovum shoma ast va ye juri vatan avval shoma ham hast shum muddati inja tashrif dashtid va ham shunin muddati dar keshwar bangladesh tashrif dashtid va shoma be har hal ye cheez hai ke ma dar mored bengali namidunim shoma az ma behtar midunid و به هر حال شما یک شبه قاره شناس هستید ما شما تشکر می کنیم که برای این سمینار اینجا تشریف آوردید و ما در خدمت شما هستیم من جناب رمیش بھردواج صاحب کا بھی شکریہ ادا کرتا ہوں بیکاز وین آئی وین ٹو ہیم ود پروفیسر راجندر کمار دیٹ وی ور لوکنگ فار پرسن ہو شوڈ بی اویئر آف both the legacies persian as well as indian so we went to our neighborhood in saskia department and we requested professor ramesh bhardavaj and you witnessed the knowledge and the sheer heritage he shared with you normally people don't have that much deep knowledge of this discipline and one more thing which i just wanted to highlight that 
it's not merely propagation of a civilization to expand that in different region of the world. Actually, it's some kind of importance which is associated with some civilizations so that there is no need of some organized propagations for expansions of those civilizations. And in past, in ancient time, no doubt, we have exercised that importance and we were pioneer in different fields so that our civilization is so popular and it was so impactful not on neighboring civilizations but in all region of the world. And this topic is not actually, actually our intention was not to show the impact of Indian civilization on Persian civilization but just to attract the attention because nowadays everyone feels kind of pride in possessing or in having claim their contribution in world civilization. So when we are talking about Indian civilization and its impact, so we actually attract some kind of attention that this is the heritage we had and this kind of impact we had. But actually, between the civilization, it's give and take. And with Iran in particular, and Persian civilization in general, we have a give and take. But for the now, because most of the time, we have seen the vice versa, impact of Persian language, Persian culture on India. But first time, we saw and felt this need that we should look reverse. And we should highlight the points where we can see the impact of Indian civilization on Persian civilization. And we are happy that we have received more than 40 papers, research papers on diverse fields and disciplines where the learned resource persons have shown the impact which actually India had not only on Iranian civilization but all other even old civilizations of the world. And in coming academic sessions, definitely we will learn and hear from the well-learned resource persons. And uh, I'm also thankful to Professor Rajinder Kumar, in whose able leadership we were able to organize or start this today's international seminar. Also Professor Ali Mashraf Khan, former head department of Persian, and actually we were getting timely advices and support from these learned professors of Delhi University Department of Persian. And I'm also thankful to all distinguished guests sitting in audience, especially our foreign guests. Man bhai dubare as mehmanani ke as kishwere Iran, as kishwere Tajikistan, as kishwere Uzbekistan, wa kishwar haiye dige inja tha shifa wardan, wa zaban shun zaban farsi shuma خودتون رو بیگانه حساب نکنید شما مهمان ما هستید و در جلسات علمی حتما ما از زبان فارسی هم استفاده خواهیم کرد من از همه شما هم ممنونم و and at the end I should uh, thank to whole team of IGNC آزادی کا امرت محصف for a few minutes چندرہ میڈم جائند اس she is the director for آزادی کا امرت محصف initiative and also other collaborating agencies ICSSR and ARC and also Persian Foundation of India. I am thankful to all of you and I request you to join us for lunch. Thank you.